Ever since we got our 2023 Airstream International, there's been a terrifying thing that has been happening. The trailer brakes have been randomly locking up, which is not a lot of fun. Got to get that fixed and get this thing dewinterized and ready for a road trip. So let's do it. So the first time that the trailer brakes locked up, I checked the connection where the harness is and I added some dielectric grease to that, plugged it back in, but that didn't fix the problem. Somebody on an online forum suggested that I check out the breakaway cable on the trailer itself. So let's check that out. So here's that breakaway cable that I was talking about. When this pin gets pulled out, it engages the trailer brakes. And the first thing I noticed was that this is not tight, that it was swaying back and forth. And I noticed that the wire is kind of passing through my propane box right here. So I thought maybe that this wiggling back and forth as I was turning was, you know, scraping the wire or wearing it out. So my first instinct was to tighten this down so that it couldn't move. But my good friend Brad Driver over at 13 Adventures told me that this is supposed to stay loose. So as you turn, the breakaway cable can actually follow with the trailer. So I'm gonna take this propane tank off and see what I find because this looks a little suspect because this is a very sharp edge right here and I can see that this wire is passing through here. Uh, so let's see what's going on. Check out my, uh, my homemade little piece of plywood here that gives me extra storage for my blocks on top of my propane tank. Stole that idea from the guys over at Keep Your Daydream. If you want to know how to make one of these, just leave me a comment uh, below and I'll tell you how I did it. All right, so I already don't like that this little wire loom protecting these wires is kind of open and these wires are kind of exposed. So it looks like maybe where these wires were passing through that hole in the bottom of the propane tank when I was turning, they're potentially getting pinched and maybe shorted out and engaging the trailer brake. So I'm going to put some electrical tape around that and try to get this whole thing a little bit more protected. And also I'm going to see what I can do about making this edge a little bit less sharp so if it does rub back and forth it doesn't create any problems anybody else have a junkie toolbox looks like i'm out of black electrical tape so blue is gonna have to do man i wish i had some black tape so i thought about just putting some electrical tape on this edge but i didn't think it would last very long since it's pretty sharp I just happen to have this like a rubber bumper. So I think I can put this on both sides of this and it'll protect it. So let's give it a shot. All right, next order of business is to check the tire pressure in both the camper and in the truck. So let's do that. I've learned that having proper tire pressure is like the most important thing you can do to avoid a roadside emergency in your camper. So the tire pressure gauge that I used to have only went up to, I think around 40 or 50 PSI, but these tires in the Airstream run a lot higher than that. So I had to go out and buy a tire pressure gauge that goes up to 250 PSI. It's a digital one, picked it up on Amazon. I'll put the link in the description of this episode. So far, I really like this one. All right, so this Airstream has the Goodyear Endurance tires on it. For maximum load, inflate to 80 PSI cold. And I, we pretty much run this camper at full payload capacity, so I do run the tires at the maximum PSI. So let's see where they're at right now. It's been sitting here for a couple months. Let's see what the cold PSI is right now. 76 and a half on that one. 77 and a half on that one. Check for any uneven tread wear while we're back here. 76 and a half. Michelin Defenders, 75 PSI cold max, 70.5. 58. Wow, this tire is low. You check it for nails. I'm a big fan of this Proven Industries lock that we got for the tongue. 
never hesitate to leave the camper in a campground, especially since we got the version that has the place to lock up the hooks on the chains too. So nobody can just hook it up to their truck and drag it off by the chains. Haven't seen a good tutorial online when I bought this about how to use it. And it wasn't completely intuitive, so I might end up making one of those too. Stores all nice and together. In case you were wondering, a three quarter inch socket is what fits on these stabilizer jacks to move them up and down. Let's get the air pressure dialed in on these tires first. Cool thing about this compressor besides the fact that it's quiet is that you can program it to just go up to however many psi you want you don't have to babysit it it'll just shut off when it's done where's the switch okay after i get the tire pressure in the truck fixed i think i'm gonna go ahead and pull the camper around to the front of the house i'll do the rest of the winterization stuff up there i gotta get the antifreeze flushed out of all the water lines I got to put water in the freshwater tank, run it through all the faucets, make sure there's no leaks, and probably some other stuff that I'm not thinking about too. A little tip for you, get yourself a pair of gloves to do this and you'll save yourself from busting your knuckles a lot. Also, get some of these. These little pins have a piece of rubber on them so you don't jam your finger trying to use them. These are called the Pin Whiz. Those are on our Amazon store. Now I got a question for you. You can answer in the comments. This truck has a two and a half inch receiver, but my hitch is two inches. So I had to buy this reducer. The problem is it's hard to keep the reducer in place as you're sliding this in. It tries to push it in and it's all got to be lined up so the pin can go through. I have a little way that I do it, but it doesn't work very well. So if you have any ideas, leave a comment below and let me know. Got to get it just so. I use the pin to hold the reducer in place. And like I said, it works, just not very well. All right, she's in. I'm not going to use the uh, weight distribution hitch to pull the camper around the driveway. That would be overkill. All right, get this thing hooked up and moved. I was just plugging in the wiring harness for the trailer, and look what I found out. The little rubber thing I put on there already popped off. I guess I'm gonna have to find something better for that. Well, we'll find out if the trailer brakes are working correctly though. We got to dewinterize this thing right now. Hopefully, all the water lines are full of RV antifreeze because it got down to like nine degrees. So, we have to put some clean water in the fresh water tank and run that through all the faucets to get the antifreeze cleared out. I think that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, the water heater is turned off right now and I need to turn that back on and make sure that it is you know, going to hold. I think, it, I think this pressure relief valve is fine in the position that it's in now because I pulled the pressure relief valve to drain the system and that's about it. So I'm trying to decide am I going to turn this on right now or once there's clean water running through the system. I think I'm going to wait till there's clean water running through the system. I remember how not simple this was. <laughs> This is water. It's a fine line between tilting and... All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the water heater on. We've got water in the fresh tank. Let's start turning on some faucets. Probably need to check that the water heater is turned on in the bathroom.
So one by one, we got to turn on each faucet until it runs clear. I'm just going to run them down into the gray tank. Oh, I got to turn the water pump on. Water pump. If you don't know where your water pump is, it's down here. So it's pulling water out of the fresh tank right now. It's noisy. All good. Here we go. Still pink. Still pink. Still pink. All right, I just switched it over to the hot. Getting the beeping out of the water heater. Let's go see what that's about. Oh, you know what? The gas is turned off. So we're not getting any hot water. I don't know if that matters, but I'll go turn it on. All right. Now the gas is on. Let's go with the hot water. I'm surprised there's not more pink coming out of here. Makes me wonder if I got any freeze into the hot line. Beep, beep, beep. What? Let's go do this while we're in here. The water heater's working. Cold. Check the water lines. Put that down here, actually. Water heater. Flush this out. All right, I think that pretty much concludes the dewinterization. Flushed out every fixture on its own until it ran clear. Got the water heater running. Water pump's working fine. So there's gonna be antifreeze in the gray and black tank, but that's not a big deal. Next time we go camping, in about a week, we'll dump then. This is the reality of plugging your camper in at home. You got your 50 amp power cord coming into your 50 amp surge protector, coming into your 30 amp converter, coming into your 15 amp converter, coming into your extension cord. Looks crazy, but it works. I can give you a little look at what we're gonna be doing for internet on this trip, because you know, we own an online coaching business, so it's kind of important that we are able to get online and do our job. This is a working trip. Anyway, we have AT&T for our cell phones, so we always have the option to hotspot to those, and we do have a big data plan to where we can do a decent amount of work on that. We couldn't stream like Netflix or something for days on end. Uh, plus, it's just a pain. It overheats your phone. It wears the battery down. So a few months ago, we uh, got a T-Mobile home internet plan, and they send you this uh, modem slash router that you can use. These are supposed to be used at home, but it's well known in the RV community that you can take these things on the road, plug them in, and just kind of use them. The bad thing about them is, is there's no way to hook up uh, an external, uh, what do you call those things, antenna to the router that T-Mobile sends you. So we bought an external like freestanding modem slash router here made by a company called Cootie. Kind of funny, right? And it has all these antennas built into it and we popped the T-Mobile SIM card into it. Uh, but the good thing is it also will allow you to hook up an external antenna if you unscrew all these little antennas that it comes with and we can run another antenna up a flagpole if we're in a place that has low signal. So the plan is to just use this as is and not use the flagpole. I think we'll be fine unless we get out in West Texas and are running into places with really low signal. So that's the plan. There aren't any uh, full length mirrors in these Airstreams. So we bought these little 10 inch by 10 inch mirrors that you can stick onto the inside of this closet door. Well, I don't know, one of them fell off at some point and they got kind of off kilter and we basically have to redo the bottom too. So uh, even though they come with an adhesive on the back, we use double-sided tape to stick them on because I was nervous we'd never get them off with all the adhesive that comes on the back. So now I'm trying to remove all this double-sided tape and basically put the bottom two back on. If you ever have to get double-sided tape off, this is really the only way to do it, to roll it. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm about to cover it back up, but it's gotta be clean enough to stick. This was like one of the first upgrades that Blakely really wanted to make in here, having full length mirror. 
you know, you gotta check the fit before you go out. Not my best work, but good enough. Let's see if I got some double side tape in here. Looky, looky what I found. So I need to put this one on first and then this one right below it. As I've said before, the hardest part about using double sided tape is peeling the backing off. So this is gonna be the longest we've ever stayed out in our camper. We've got a week's worth of reservations and then we don't know after that. Let's see how it goes. It doesn't feel like the most secure fit, I'm not gonna lie. Let's see if it lasts this trip.
Alright guys, welcome to the Digital Barbell Podcast. Thanks so much for being here. 